Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and program a Valentine one using the iPhone. We're gonna go ahead and go step by step through the app and uh, go through all the different settings and options. Uh, if you like, this entire tutorial is also available uh, on my website in article form. So if you'd rather read the tutorial and look at the pictures and follow along that way, uh, I'll have a link to the article down in the video description so you can read this tutorial instead. Uh, this is gonna be the video version for you to follow along. Now, in order for this to work, uh, you're gonna need four different things. Number one, obviously you're gonna need the Valentine 1 radar detector. Uh, you're gonna need a new enough version of the V1. You're gonna need at least version 3.892 or newer. That way your V1 actually supports the Bluetooth communication. Uh, I recommend having version 3.894 or newer. That way you have the latest version of Valentine's K-band filter. Uh, if you're wondering how to check what version of the V1 that you have, I'll have a link in the video description to a video which will actually show you how to do it. Very simple. Number two, you're gonna need the iPhone version of the Bluetooth module. It's called the V1CLE. There's an Android and an iPhone version. Make sure you pick up the iPhone one. Uh, number three, you're gonna need an iPhone, of course, running iOS 7 or newer. And finally, you're gonna need a copy of the Valentine One Connection app. It's called V1 Connection. I'll put a link to where you can download that in the video description as well. So uh, you're gonna need those four things. Uh, once you get all that set up, go ahead and um, get everything up and running, run the app, and uh, here we are now in the main page. So let's go ahead and start from the top and work our way through. So. From the main page up here, you've got an option for profiles. The profiles are actually where we're gonna go in and configure our different settings. You can actually have several different profiles to make it a lot easier to switch between different settings on the fly when you're driving, which is very nice. So you'll notice right here with a fresh install, we just have the factory default options and we don't have any settings programmed yet. So what we're gonna do is click on create new profile down at the bottom. We do that, and now it's gonna go ahead and drop us into here where we can go in and so you can see change all the different settings, turn individual bands on and off, all that kind of stuff. Now, getting started, what you're gonna to wanna to do before we start running through everything is you're gonna to wanna to click on Special. When we go to Special, the second option here, you can see it says Euro Mode. We're gonna to wanna to change it out of USA Mode and into Euro Mode. Confirm, are you sure you wanna do this? And it'll say yes, and some of the options will change. The reason that we wanna do this is it's actually gonna open up some additional options for us, such as the ability to program our custom sweeps. Uh, we're definitely gonna want custom sweeps. That's one of the things that uh, you actually can't do through your V1 itself, you have to do it through your phone. So once we enable Euro, mo or Euro mode, you can see we now have the option to go in here and mess with custom sweeps. You'll notice if we go over here and switch it back into USA mode, you'll notice the custom sweeps option is gone. However, we do have this option here for false alarms. Uh, as you can see, we have the option for KA guard. This is designed to help us filter out false alerts on KA band from other kind of poorly designed leaky radar detectors like Cobras. Uh, the filter is helpful to help you know cut down on false alarms, but you're gonna get a pretty big hit on performance. So it's for that reason that a lot of times you'll wanna actually turn this filter off for better performance. However, you'll notice the false alarm section right there. If we go back into special and set it to Euro mode, and notice the false alarm section is gone, right? So we're getting custom sweeps, we're losing KA guards. Some of the options are gonna be changing here. So we're gonna to wanna to start with this. Uh, Euro mode is important. Uh, even if you live in the US like I do, you're gonna to wanna to run Euro mode because of the custom sweeps option. It's, it's designed for Europe and all, but again, this is helpful for anybody who lives in the US and Canada, wherever else, you know? So Euro mode is good. So we'll start with that. And now let's go ahead and work our way from the top. So you can see now we have a couple different options here for the bands. Uh, laser, you can turn it on or off. The V1 has sensational laser detection. It's actually the best laser detector in any radar detector. It's phenomenal. However, you're also gonna be getting a fair number of false alerts because the filtering's not that great. So it's for that reason that I actually run with laser turned off like this. And I let my laser jammers, my ALPs, actually handle the laser detection and jamming all together. So I find the ALPs uh, filters are a lot better. So if you don't have jammers yet, you can run with it turned on, and that's a good option there. So totally up to you how you wanna run it. Euro X-Band allows you to turn X-Band on and off. If you're not sure, watch my video on how to find out what's used in your area. Link to that is down in the video description as well. Uh, KU-Band is not used in the United States. From what I understand, it's only in a couple places overseas in Europe. So if you're in the States or Canada or whatever, leave that turned off for sure. Okay, mute control. So this is pretty handy. On the front of the V1, you have two different buttons. The big main button on the front is gonna be the uh, the volume knob, 
Around the volume knob, you have this uh, secondary volume lever. That volume lever is usually used to control your muted volume. And so you can actually choose with this first option up here if you want that lever to be controlling the muted volume. However, if when the V1 gets muted, you just want it to automatically silence the alert, you can set it to zero like this. So your muted volume actually drops all the way to zero. If you do that, you can actually change what that outer uh, volume lever does over here. And basically the second option, you can see bogey lock volume after muting. So after you've muted the alert, if you get a new bogey, a new signal, do you want the volume of that new signal uh, that's not gonna be muted to be controlled by the uh, outer volume lever or the main volume knob? Uh, I like the volume knob, it's you know the main volume, right? So I leave it like that. The defaults are good, and uh, if you're not wondering, maybe leave it like this, and uh, the main volume knob is gonna be your main volume, and then the outer one, the lever, will be your muted volume. So this is the default. Uh, experiment if you want, of course. It'll make more sense once you start playing with it, but that's the general idea. Uh, K-band muting. Here we've got some of the controls for the V1's basic K-band muting options. Uh, if we want to go ahead and activate it, we'll go ahead and turn it on like this. Uh, and now we've got a couple different options. Time period is basically going to be how long the V1 alerts at normal volume before it then reduces the volume of the alerts. The default is 10 seconds, so after 10 seconds it'll go ahead and automatically mute your alerts for you. Uh, you've got the option here, no muting above three lights on first encounter. Uh, the strength meter on the front of the V1, there's eight dots, so signal strength from one to eight. Uh, if the signal is going to be uh, very strong when you first pick it up, think maybe detecting instant on at close range. It's uh, If we're getting something like that, I want the V1 to go ahead and alert in that situation, so we're going to turn it on. Otherwise, if it's a very weak signal that's slowly growing over time, if that's the case, we want to go ahead and mute the weaker signals, which could be a grocery store on the side of the road or whatever else, you know. Uh, if the signal, you know, it starts off weak and then it gets to five lights or stronger, right, above five lights, at that point, it's a very strong signal. I want it to get my attention, so I'm going to want it to alert. So at this one, we're going to go ahead and turn that on. Very helpful. Uh, and then finally, after you pass the source, a K-band source, uh, if it's behind you, you can actually then go ahead and automatically mute the signal as well. Uh, this is a helpful way to cut down on a lot of the false alerts that uh, maybe some of the other filters would miss, you know? So uh, behind you, it's generally going to be much less of a threat, so you can automatically mute any signals that are going on behind you. Very helpful. Next, we're going to go back into special. Uh, this is actually where we had set uh, Euro mode initially, so let's go ahead and now uh, go through the rest of the options that are available. Uh, the first one here allows us to basically run with only KA band or K and KA. Uh, generally, I run both, you know, because K and KA band are both used here where I live. If you're fortunate enough to be in an area where only KA band is in use, congratulations, that's awesome. Uh, an easy way to confirm is uh, once you have all this stuff loaded, once you get the custom sweeps going, uh, the front of your V1 is gonna switch from an A to a C. If you have K-band turned on, you're going to have a big C on the front of the display. Uh, if at any point you want to disable K-band, you can actually press and hold the uh, the main volume knob for like a second or two, and it'll actually switch to a little C, which lets you know that K-band is turned off. So it's really easy to enable and disable K-band on the fly just by pressing the big button on the front. Uh, so I don't really mess with it here in the uh, phone. I just take care of that through the V1. Really easy to do. Finally, the other three, uh, TMF and the Jump K-Fighter. Uh, basically, this is going to be the primary K-band filter to help filter out uh, traffic sensors on the highway, like traffic monitor filter, and also Junk K-Fighter, uh, helping to filter out many of the cars with blind spot monitoring systems. Uh, for complete information about how this feature works, uh, pros and cons, all that kind of stuff, uh, I've got a video for this that you can watch. Again, link in the video description that explains TMF, TSR, Junk K-Fighter, all this kind of stuff in detail and how it works. Basically, the idea, turn it on, you'll get much fewer false alerts. Uh, the newer version of the V1s, I mentioned 3.894 or newer, they have the Junk K-Fighter or the second generation of TMF, so we call it TMF2, aka Junk K-Fighter, same thing. So uh, with this, leave it turned on. It's going to significantly help cut down on your false alerts. Uh, if you're in an area, uh, maybe like in rural areas where you don't have a lot of cars with blind spot sensors and you don't have those traffic sensors on the highway, you can turn it off and you'll get maximum performance on K-Band. Uh, so it's for that reason I actually generally run two profiles, one for rural areas when I'm off in the mountains somewhere with the filter turned on, and then for general driving in the city, I'll have that feature turned on, and I can switch between the profiles on the fly. Right. Very handy. Uh, next, 
dark mode. A dark mode will actually disable the display on the front of your V1 and run your V1 totally dark. Uh, you'll still hear the alerts, but you won't see the alerts. Whether you're getting an alert or not, your display will be totally turned off. Uh, you'll be able to see them instead on your phone, so it's kind of a way to run your V1 in uh, kind of a stealthier mode. If you prefer that, you can leave it turned on. If you prefer to have your V1 all lit up, you can turn it off, right? So I normally run with it turned on. Finally, alert persistence. This is pretty handy. I like this feature. Uh, when you get an alert, it'll display on your phone, and then when the alert goes away, it'll actually stay on your phone for a little bit and then start to slowly fade away over time. You'll see kind of this white ghost image on screen that starts to fade away. Really helpful after you pass an alert uh, to be able to look back at your phone later and see what was the frequency, what was going on. You can look back later. So I find that feature really helpful. So you can leave that turned on. Okay, uh, next, Savvy. So Savvy is an accessory that you can purchase from Valentine. Uh, basically, it's a little box that you plug into your car's OBD2 port. Uh, it can monitor the speed that you're driving. And uh, at that point, you can uh, change a little dial on it and say, if I'm traveling below a certain speed, I want to go ahead and mute my V1. So it's basically a way to get low speed muting around town. So if you're sitting at a stoplight or something, your V1 isn't going ballistic, you know? Now, you have the option here in the phone to actually configure Savvy as well without having to reach underneath your car and uh, you know change the dial, right? So a couple options here. If you have that accessory um, and you want to basically unmute Savvy when you travel over your speed threshold, you can turn that on here. Otherwise, you can keep you know your view unmuted the whole time. I like the alerts if I start driving faster, you know? So turn it on. Uh, if you want to override the Savvy thumb wheel, you can do that right here in your phone, as opposed to, again, having to reach under your car and change the dial, pretty handy. And then once you enable it, you can go in here and, you know, change it to whatever speed you want, 25, 30 miles per hour, kilometers per hour, whatever. So you can actually go in and uh, change Savvy from your phone rather than having to do it from the device itself, which is kind of handy. Uh, custom sweeps, okay, cool. So let's get into custom sweeps. Uh, if you want to know all the information about custom sweeps, I have an article dedicated to the subject because there's a lot that we could say. Again, article, video description, you know the drill. Uh, what custom sweeps are designed to do is, uh, by default, the V1 will sweep a really, really wide range of frequencies on KA band. However, police only use a very small couple sections of KA band, and so it's for that reason that uh, the V1 is actually basically wasting its time scanning a bunch of frequencies where there's never ever going to be any legitimate radar. By wasting that time, it uh, just takes longer to do the sweeps. So what happens is if you say, hey V1, I know there's only a few situations or a few frequencies where radar is even going to exist in the first place, let's focus in on just those frequencies, you're going to be getting a bunch of uh, performance benefits. It makes the V1 faster because it's not wasting time doing all this stuff that you don't need. It's also going to give you better range, and it's uh, something that we've actually done quite a bit of testing on. If you go online, you'll find a lot of different variations as far as custom sweeps, people's recommendations, suggestions, what they found. There's no one right answer. You can go ahead and customize this to your heart's delight. However, I found people doing that when they start doing their research, they wind up more confused than anything. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and give you a set of custom sweeps that are good for all 50 states. Right? So this is just to keep it simple. This is going to be good everywhere. It doesn't matter what state you live in. You can road trip across the country. This will work for you. So here's what you're going to do. I'll go ahead and program it real quick, and then I'll explain it a little bit in a second because it is going to look a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, cool. So here's how we have everything programmed. Uh, the idea is there's really only three frequency ranges in the United States where the police use. They operate on 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5. So what we're going to do is basically tell our V1 to scan those frequency ranges plus or minus about 100 megahertz, plus a little bit more to cover any potentially out of tune guns that are slightly outside of that range. So the way that it works, we've got three different sweeps that we're using here. 33.8, you'll notice we don't actually have a sweep program for it. That's okay. That's totally normal. The way the V1 is designed, it's going to automatically sweep 33.8, and you can't turn it off. So even if you wanted to, you can't because it's automatically going to be sweeping it. So because the 33.8 sweep is built in, we don't even actually have to go in and program it. I know it's a little bit weird, but it does have it even if you don't tell it to. 34.7, the way that it works is if you take a look at the programming options, if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that the sweep actually has to be broken down into two different sections, and there's actually a gap in the middle of 34.7. You'll see the first sweep will have to run all the way up until 34.770, 
Then we're gonna have to create a second sweep that starts at 34.774 and goes up from there. So there's actually a gap of four megahertz between the two different 34.7 sweeps that we have to work with. Uh, that's okay, the V1 is actually designed to over sweep a little bit, so even though it's programmed to not cover that little gap in the middle, because it's kind of over sweeping beyond the boundaries, it'll still cover that range. So uh, the way we have our 34.7 sweep set up, as you can see, we're covering about 34.6 to 34.8 plus a little bit more with a little bit of a gap in the middle there. So that's how our 34.7 sweep is set up. So 33.8 is a little weird. We don't have to program it. 34.7 is a little weird because we have to break it up. 35.5 that's the only one that's actually normal. As you, can as you can see, if you take a look, we have one sweep that's basically covering uh, 35.4 to 35.6, right? So 35.5 plus minus 100 megahertz plus a little bit more. So we're going 35.394 to 35.614. Again, if you wanna go into all the details and you know customizing your custom sweeps, I've got a whole article on just that. If you wanna keep it simple and you just wanna know what to type in, do this, let's keep it simple and you're good to go. Fair? Cool. Okay, so there we go. Let's go back into the profiles. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go into the in the box options. So the way boxes work, this is kind of like custom sweeps, but a little bit different. Uh, custom sweeps will tell our V1 what frequencies that we're actually gonna be scanning in the first place. Uh, boxes are gonna say if we now pick up an alert within the frequency range, uh, should we mute it or not? So take a look at this. We're gonna go ahead and turn on these first four options. So what we're gonna see here, let's take a look at box one. You'll notice that's scanning 33.7 to 33.9. Remember how I mentioned that's turned on by default and we couldn't turn it off even if we wanted to? One of the downsides of doing that, especially since KA guard is turned off, is we are gonna be getting some false alerts on KA band to these Cobras. The Cobras will often false alert your V1 around 33.6, sometimes 33.7, 33.8, that range. Uh, but it's really common to get you know 33.6-ish falses. So what we can do is we can set with this box, we're gonna say if we get any alerts between 33.7 and 33.9, that's where the police radar guns actually operate. So if that's the case, I want the detector to alert. However, if it's outside of that box, such as 33.6, which is where a Cobra might be. I want you to mute that signal. So out of the box, I want it to mute. So that's a nice way. It's kind of a Band-Aid because of the fact that we can't turn off the 33.6-ish sweeps. I really wish Valentine would give us that ability, but they haven't. So this is kind of a little hack, a little you know, workaround that we have to work with uh, just to mute those frequencies, even though the V1 is gonna technically alert to them anyways. So you've got that. Uh, you'll notice there's an option here for in the box unmuting. I don't like this option because if you enable it, you can see there's a little warning that pops up and it says, if you use this feature, you'll no longer be able to manually mute the V1 with the big button on the front, which is a feature I find really helpful. I love being able to reach up to the V1, press the button to mute it. If you enable this option, you're gonna lose that capability. So it's for that reason I recommend not running that. Uh, anyways, there's other options for other boxes. Uh, don't worry about those too much. You don't really need them. So there you go. And then finally, background notifications. Uh, if you want background notifications, so if you're driving around and uh, you get an alert, uh, you'll get a little uh, banner that pops down on the top of the screen. You can tap on that banner and it will drop you right into the uh, app. So you can see the frequency, you can see what's going on with your V1, uh, especially if you're running it in dark mode perhaps. It makes it easier to see what's going on with the arrows and all that stuff. So background notifications are an easy way to actually get back into the app. Uh, I actually don't use it because what I do instead is there's a couple other apps that are uh, available um, for the V1, uh, like Stealth Assist and V1 Driver. I'll actually run these apps instead. I'll use the V1 Connection app for initially programming my V1, like is, which is what we're doing now, uh, but Stealth Assist will give um, low speed muting. Uh, V1 Driver will give low speed muting as well as GPS lockouts. Uh, that app currently is available only for beta testing purposes. Um, it's currently under development. Uh, but anyways, for these two apps, links in the video descriptions to learn more about them. Uh, I run these to add some additional functionality day to day when I'm driving with my V1, and I use this V1 Connection app for the actual programming process, right? So, cool. Whoops, and I think I might have lost all my work, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, reprogram everything real quick. Okay, anyways, uh, let's say we've got everything programmed now. And what we're gonna do next is, uh, once we've got everything programmed the way that we want, we've run through everything, uh, two things that we need to do finally. Number one, we're gonna wanna go up here to a profile name and we're gonna wanna give this profile something useful. Like for example, um, what I'd normally do is my main profile that I'll run would be something like K-band turned on, uh, K-A-band turned on, 
and I have TMF2 turned on. Uh, I'll have different profiles, as I mentioned, with maybe uh, TMF2 turned off if I want the better performance, or if I'm in an area where X-Band is in use, I'll have a profile that turns on X-Band. So you can have different profiles like this, right? So what you're going to do is uh, once you get everything programmed the way that you like uh, done there, we've got a name for our profile, and finally we're going to click on Save right up here. Uh, at this point, it's then going to go ahead and take all of these different settings and then push them over to the V1 and go ahead and program our V1. As you can see, it takes a couple seconds, and we'll hit OK. Cool. And now it's successfully written these settings to our V1. Awesome. So now, as you can see, we can go back over here, and now instead of the A, we have a C on the front of the V1. Uh, I've got a big C right now, which tells me that the K-band is turned on. If I want, I can press and hold the big button on the front of the V1 for a second or two, and you'll see it'll switch to a little C, which tells me the K-band is turned off. If I want, press and hold the button again, and it switches back to a big C to let me know K-band is now turned back on. So uh, C lets me know that I've got my custom sweeps loaded in. Uh, if I don't have my custom sweeps loaded in, I'll actually have a U there, which lets me know that I have Euro mode enabled, but I don't have my custom sweeps yet. If I'm in uh, USA mode, I'm going to have the big A for all bogeys, or you may have the little L or the big L for the different logic modes. But anyways, once you get it all programmed, you're going to see a C on the display right here on your phone, as well as on the front of the V1, lets you know that you have everything programmed and you're all set. Uh, once you're done, if you want to load additional profiles, you can go to the profiles and uh, click on create new profile again and create a new one with maybe slightly different settings. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have the ability to actually duplicate a profile and just change one little setting the way you do like with the Yavi One. You actually have to recreate the entire profile from scratch. However, once you get comfortable, once you get familiar with it, it's not that big of a deal to do. So anyways, there you go. There is a walkthrough for uh, programming your V1 on the iPhone uh, with all the different settings. Uh, again, I've referenced different videos, articles, uh, links for where you can download the app or the, even the third-party apps, all that kind of stuff. You'll find a bunch of links down in the video description for more information. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comment area below. Uh, if you found this video useful, uh, please go ahead and, you know, Give it a like, a thumbs up, uh, share it if you find it useful and you think other people would benefit from it. Uh, you can also support me by donating directly to my channel, which you know helps me to continue making these videos. So you'll find a link to the donation option down in the video description as well, just like all the other links and videos and whatnot. So there you go. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I know this is a video that you guys have been requesting for quite a long time. Uh, now that actually, the reason I haven't done it is because uh, I think Android has been a lot better thanks to Yavi One. However. Now with the introduction of a V1 driver, we're getting GPS lockouts like we have on Android, and it's for that reason that uh, uh, the iPhone is becoming a much more viable option. So thanks to that, went ahead and created it. Um, you know, this video for you guys, how to program your V1. Uh, again, for more information on V1 driver or anything else, video description, links, all that stuff is down there. So awesome. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.